Welcome to today's podcast, and I'm delighted to say that I've got Michal Suski from Suffer SEO, which is very much a hot topic in today's industry. So, Michal, thank you very much for taking the time to join me. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Um, that's a really an honor to, to, to be there. So, yeah, looking forward to your questions, man. <laughs> um, so um <coughs> recently you were over in Chiang Mai um and sadly I was unable to to get out there um, cuz I've got other speaking events and stuff but that was your first trip to Chiang Mai and obviously from Chiang Mai I've heard loads of people going surf for this surf for that um so I'm taking um from what I've seen in social media and stuff that Chiang Mai was a massive success for you? Um, no doubts. I mean, uh, the, we, we had a great time in there making contacts that uh, I couldn't even imagine I can make. So uh, I will say that the Chiang Mai was, was the best event uh, I was attending, definitely. And the quality of, of other attendants was like, wow. I met so big people there uh, that that you know I, I was wondering that how to reach out to those guys like should I send them message on 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 Facebook or should I do the LinkedIn pitch? But now uh, they are my friends, so yeah, really, really recommend to everyone going to Chiang Mai, definitely. Yeah, that's one of one of my favourite events as well, and uh, glad to see that um, you've had great success. Just it's, it's just an amazing bunch of people out there, um, very friendly and uh, very open as well. Obviously, you go out there as a a stranger when you go out for the first time, and before you know it, you know you're friends with everyone. And um, yeah, I think it's just a, a great. I Indeed. think that the crucial crucial thing of being there is to come earlier uh, to 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 get a chance uh, to talk like in a bar on a on a on a dinner whatever. Uh, so you don't have to make the first contact on the conference because there's a huge rush uh, in in the hotel. So uh, there's no way to 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 do the proper. Uh, talks with with those people so yeah definitely come earlier and try to uh you know uh, reach out to 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 the people you want to meet before the 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 conference starts so that's that's the best i can uh i can uh tell to do yeah i think that's the same for most conferences if i'm being honest i think the networking and the um meeting people you know a day or two before um, or in Chiang Mai, you know, a week or two before, um, is is definitely something worth investing in, um, because, you know, I think a lot of people go, oh, it's just a holiday, it's just you're just going to get drunk, and obviously you, your wife, you know, I know you've had a young kid recently, and uh, your wife would be like, come on, man, what what the hell are you doing, um, going out there for a party and leaving me with a baby, um, but the reality is it works, it really does work, and you know, turns into a lot of money. So for anyone listening, <coughs> it's not a case of getting away from your wife <laughs> for yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. That, that, she had a hard time with the baby, baby definitely, like almost two weeks alone. But uh, we, we just had to do this, you know. Uh, I would regret us, like, uh, like for anything else in the world if if I wasn't there. Yeah, no, I think it's great for business, and I think obviously Surfer is now well and truly on the map um, in the SEO world. If it wasn't already on the map, um, I know it's been doing really well, but as I say, ever since um, Chiang Mai, that will will increase by ten times. Um, but what? Let's talk about a bit about Surfer. Um, it's obviously over recent years we've heard people talking about. Um, P.O.P., Cora, Surfer, um, and, you know, even myself, I'm, I'm like, uh, what, you know, what are these tools? Why are people so obsessed with them? And it's not until you start looking at them, you go, wow, you know, this is really good stuff. Um, so for anyone listening who doesn't know what Surfer SEO is, have a look. Um, you know, 
just just have a look. Don't be ignorant <laughs> and have a look and see what it does. Um, so how long have you guys actually been live with Surfer? So we are around for like two years when we released the beta version of Surfer uh, in, in Poland, in Kraków on a conference. Uh, so there was, that was uh, the, the, the beta, beta release in November 2017, but we actually started working on it earlier. Uh, that's obvious. Uh, so it's like almost three years uh, old project. Uh, and it all started with the agency uh, in Poland, in a small village, uh, where we had troubles with hiring people skilled in SEO because there were any uh, of, of, of those on the, on the job market. So uh, we had to figure out something to scale up the agency without scaling up the manpower. And mm-hmm. this is why this is why Surfer was born because um, Sławek Tchaikovsky, CEO of the agency and the CEO of Surfer, uh, so he figured out um, a methodology of uh, doing on page uh, based on the competitor's analysis, uh, like like the Surfer is is doing automatically. But uh, at the time uh, we were doing it manually. We were visiting all those pages. Uh, checking them by hand, uh, analyzing the word count, analyzing the common words, common phrases, checking the densities, calculating them on paper, which was freaking time consuming. But, uh, you know, then we figured out, hey, what, what would happen if we have it done for us automatically? And this is where uh, the development side of the project appeared. And uh, we actually had a tiny bit of a tool, like the pre-beta version uh, that we developed internally in Company SEO, uh, the Mm -hmm. company. Uh, But then uh, Lucian, my brother, joined us. Uh, So uh, we decided, me, Suavek, and and Lucian, to take take on the project and... uh, try to to develop something together and Swavek and me from the SEO perspective, like the pro- speeding up the processes perspective. So we were responsible for uh, being uh, helpful for the SEOs. I, I mean, to, 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 to make sure that the tool really uh, give huge benefit to, to its users. And Lucian was responsible for uh, building it. Literally, he was doing it alone uh, after, uh, like, uh, as a side project. It was a side project for three of us, and yeah. So it was a side project because that's what that was going to be. What I was going to ask next, obviously, doing client work and then you know jumping into to making such such a tool <laughs> is two very very different um, projects. Um, but you done this on the side, just at night time and at the weekends and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So I have experience uh, a little bit in in let's say, product development since I've been a quality assurance in a software house for three years. So uh, I've been around with building web applications, uh, so the processes. Uh, Lucian uh, is really a skilled developer who who was working at the time in Strategizer. So maybe you can recall the company from the business model canvas thing that they developed. Uh So pretty, pretty big uh, company. Um, so he, he, he was also uh, like skilled in, in his area, being the CTO of the project. Definitely uh, he, he did a great job. Uh, plus Swavek, who, who was definitely responsible for how it works from the SEO perspective. What do SEO need to get the job done? And since he was managing the, the, the whole company, doing client SEO, uh, he 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 was the the best uh, the best person to uh, address those questions that SEOs have to address those uh, pains that they are experiencing every day. And yeah, I think that this is, this is uh, something that 
is behind the whole story kind of success we we had so far uh, that it is really solving uh, pains of of the client so it's not like imaginated tool that uh, uh, first will create a problem and then will solve it uh, yeah. then it is it is something that solves the real problems that uh, people are experiencing and yeah that 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 might be the most important thing that is uh behind uh behind the whole uh story um i mean i think you know um you know the the tool and the functionality and everything's great and uh, obviously it helps massively um uh, with anyone who wants to measure or do proper competitor analysis but for me one of your very very strong unique selling points especially to agencies is the the kind of dashboard and the reporting side of it as well um because we've obviously seen cora pop and stuff like that and in my opinion um surfer is a lot more pleasing in the eye and obviously if you show a surfer report to a client and say we need to improve your on-page SEO. Look at this. This is what the competition have got in terms of keywords or headers or whatever, um, you know, surfer shows. Then it gives you something that's tangible for a, a customer to believe that you're actually doing something. Whereas if you were to show them another report or just simply say to them, you know, we have to do your on-page it's not enough in this day and age because there's so many bad SEOs out there that customers want some data. So I think that's that's another unique selling point um, of Surfer is just because the, the the reporting and the the you know dashboard and everything just looks so good, you can actually just show that to customers and buy yourself time to be able to do the job properly as well. You know what is really important in this area that. You can have clients who don't want to change their sites. Okay, just do my SEO with backlinks, do it with off page and like deal with it. But uh, then you are showing him the audit and say that, hey, really, we, we have to fix it because it will cost like 10 times more if we don't push the on page as well. So you can convince them to uh, to do the changes because they see why do they have to do that to 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 to, to change uh, the site and um, even even for people who are more into into off site SEO into backlinks uh, it can be also beneficial uh, because they don't have to spend that much money or that much time on setting up PPNs whatever because uh, the page will be easier to rank like. Uh, so it is it is definitely beneficial for both parties the on page seo believers the off page seo believers as well so it it connects both uh both areas of doing seo makes backlinks uh cheaper with let's say uh making the, the sponsored articles ranking higher or uh, allowing page to rank higher with less amount of backlinks even in in, in competitive niches uh but there is uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is that even people who are responsible for uh, the client's acquisition for doing offers uh, on, on SEO services, uh, they were also using Surfer to first estimate the amount of work that will be required to, to get the clients on top. Yeah. Plus, uh, to share uh, with with them that they have knowledge about uh, kind of scientific approach to SEO, uh, which also help to get the client convinced on your uh, on your offer because he he know uh, that that you know the thing, and so so even people from uh, customer service from from uh, sales. Uh, they are also using Surfer, at least in the agency that I was working for, the company SEO. Yeah, I think obviously if you get creative, you can turn this into um, you know a number of different tools for yourself. And I think obviously as a as a sales tool, um, it's it's great as well as you say. Um, you get a, you know, or even a quoting tool, being able to quote and say 
cheese, you know, because sometimes, obviously, and, and I've been um, guilty of this in the past, obviously, when I used to do client work was you just tell the client, yeah, this is this is the budget we need. And the reality is you could you could probably spend four months doing on page before the, the client's even ready to get anything else done. Um, and obviously you're shooting yourself in the foot because the client doesn't really understand or see what you're doing in the background. Um, whereas, as I say, your data um, and everything shows them exactly, you know, the scientific approach to that. But obviously it's not just about... Um, on page and competitor analysis suffer suffer as a little bit more than that. Um, obviously, your re- most recent thing, which, which I've seen again great feedback from, was there used to be the Google Chrome extension Keywords Anywhere, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's Keyword are, Surfer. It's Keyword Surfer. <laughs> keyword Surfer is <laughs> what you want now, um, which is replaced keywords anywhere because um, did keywords anywhere just disappear not no longer exist or or has people just jumped on to suffer that that's something i'm not entirely sure of um but i know everyone's like oh man this is an amazing um extension this is the one um so i've seen a lot of people talking highly of that so what what exactly is that extension and what does it do um so basically the extension uh provides you information about uh, search volumes of a keyword that you are typing into Google. Plus, uh, you will get those suggested searches. Uh, so they will also get the search volume. So you can find out uh, which which are uh, better to tackle with your um, analysis uh, or doing the SEO. But besides of that, you will find their uh, search volumes for related searches that are at the bottom of of the search results. Plus, we have this uh, keyword research tool built into Surfer, which has some unique features. And uh, the the, the biggest one is that we ask our keywords database to provide uh, keywords that have the same search results uh, as the main focus keyword. So if you are, uh, let's say, type SEO services London, you will get uh, similar keywords that Google uh, rank the same URLs. And if you have the knowledge of, of those, then you can think, okay, uh, this, this, and this keyword have 70% the same search results. So it is obvious that I can tackle both uh, with the same content, with the same URL. So it's like reverse engineering the, the search results and you can find out which keywords are the same for Google because Google provides the same search results, so the same content rank of on, on, on those keywords. So this is pretty pretty unique thing, I, I, I guess. And uh, it is also in the extension. So there is a, a little box on the top, on the right side, that will provide you 10 similar keywords uh, for the keyword that you started with. So definitely uh, this is uh, pretty unique. And um, actually, and it, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Not, and, it, and that is completely free forever for anyone. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It was so like, you, don't, you don't have to be a customer. You can just get no. this. You don't have to. It was like, you know, we wanted to do something to thank the community. Like, uh, we had a massive amount of feedback during the process of implementing new features into Surfer. A lot of people helped us with uh, valuable insights, with bug reporting, with anything that I can imagine. Uh, So we wanted to give something uh, in exchange to the SEO community and here it is, the keyword surfer. It will remain free because we think we owe to the community. So yeah, that was that was the idea to uh, to build the extension um, and share it with the with the world as words. Thank you guys for for help. <laughs> no, it's a, another great thing from Surfer. So if anyone doesn't um, yet use it, it's the 
the surfer keyword extension you'll be able to get it in their website and as Michal says completely free and gives you plenty of good data on there to um, replace the keywords any, anywhere too that used to be the, the be all and end all for everyone doing that type of thing. Um, one other thing I want to talk to you about um, is the content side of things um, and you brought out the content editor um, probably three, four months ago or that's when I first um, was aware of it. Um how's that going? Because I know a lot of people are, you know, content's one of those areas within SEO that it's a, a pain in the ass to get right. And obviously people, you know, outsource that stuff. And, uh, you know, having some kind of guide as to how many words, how many headings, how many paragraphs and so on is perfect. Um, so how is the content editor going? Are you getting great feedback from that too? So we all have SOPs on content outsourcing. Um, and those SOPs uh, in general uh, include, as you mentioned, uh, detailed information about the shape of the content and what uh, should be included within the content. But uh, let's be honest, it requires a tons of manual analysis, of competitors' analysis. Even if you have Surfer, you had to uh, analyze a keyword, figure out the length, uh, copy and paste the common words and phrases. And the biggest pain point was to execute it and check. Uh, since we all know the, the writers, uh, that they, they just do their job, right? And the more detailed uh, recommendations they get, uh, the less slack they have, the less creativity is left in the article. Plus, um, like the writers don't like those exact matching uh, requirements for the densities because they have to calculate it. They have to check frequently if they're doing it right or not. Uh, so this is uh, the content ed editor is something that save them uh, those uh, this not creative uh, part of their copywriting. So they, they just see the recommendations on the right, the right content on the left with a clean editor and it is just done for them, I mean, the checking, if if they are matching the requirements, because not only uh, the SEO is responsible for the requirements, but the writer is also responsible for, for meeting those requirements. And another pain point when it comes to SEO, who receives the content, right? Okay, I got the content, I spent an hour on building great uh, recommendations uh, for the writer, but what should I do now? Is to control F the whole document to see if uh, exact keywords is used the right amount of times, if the density is okay, if uh, like, and the more detailed uh, draft for the writer is, uh, the more work I have. So I, so it was like, okay, do I really want to spend an hour checking the article later? Uh, okay, let's do uh, the recommendations uh, a bit, a bit more shallow, so I don't have to do it uh, afterwards. So uh, the content editor fixes all the pain points for uh, for the content creation SOPs. Uh, so it is done for you within a minute. It helps the writer to meet the requirements because it's checked on the fly. So you don't have to like click check my content or something else. It's it's like on the fly. And when you receive the content that is ready for you, you just take a look and see, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's done. My requirements are uh, like they are fully, uh, fully, fully completed. Uh, so, um, yeah, the feedback feedback is really positive. I've been interviewing a few writers. Uh, it was like in an early stage uh, of of the editor. Uh, so I reviewed a few writers to uh, to, to to find out some uh, uh, points that they were like uh, that, that that were problematic for them to write in in it. 
and yeah the feedback was was really positive but we had one big issue uh with uh spreading the content editor into everyone's sop and that was google docs mm. google docs like everyone is using the google docs okay let's 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 make the statement like almost everyone is using google docs and they have their processes they have templates they have folders management whatever comments cooperation uh the saved uh, uh versions of the article suggesting all the stuff that is uh, you know cool about uh, google docs and uh even that the editor was really effective then they couldn't incorporate it into their processes because um they were already uh you know they are a running machine with thousand gears and one of the gears is is google docs and there's like no way to replace the google docs from their machines because they were you know running all the time so um we figured out uh that we have to connect uh the content editor with google docs and this is why we built another chrome extension for uh for the google docs um it is still <laughs> it is it is funny because you can uh visit uh the content editor and you will see the button connect with google docs while uh, the extension is not announced yet so I, I get tons of messages about hey it is not working for me do you have an extension installed no and I know, I know why, because it's not published and I'm sharing the extension and <laughs> then it works. So guys, uh, we will we will publish the extension soon. It's it's working flawless and yeah, you can you can reach out to, to, to me if you want to do it today, but uh, we will publish it soon. Uh, I mean as soon as possible, I guess. Good man. No, it sounds it sounds as if it's all going well. Um <coughs> what what does the future hold? For Surfer, is there any plans to release any more tools, or are you just trying to refine what you've you've got? You know what what is the plans going forward? I would love to refine what we have, but uh, there is no time for refining because there are so many cool ideas in our heads uh, popping up all the time. So uh, it is uh, really hard to prioritize it. Uh, since we have three developers on board right now, um, and um, there is there's this struggle all the time: should we implement new feature or fix something that is being requested uh, for a while? So if if something is being requested a lot, then we fix it. But if it's like nice to have, then we don't do it. And uh, right now. Uh, we are focusing on NLP, natural language processing. Uh -huh. um, Google has an API for that, um, and I think it's a it's a good moment after the the, the BERT uh, core update. It is a good moment to uh, take a closer look at this NLP uh, API. Um, we we run some tests already. Actually, there's a, a funny story about it connected with the Chiang Mai uh, conference because uh, Rad Palushak uh, had uh, a, a speech like two days before the conference. It was like at workshops or something like this in a, in a, in a bar. So yep. we, we've been there and he was talking about uh, NLP sentiment analysis based on the Watson's uh, it's from the Microsoft, I guess. Uh, so the natural language processing, not from Google. Is, I, I'm not sure what's what's in the proper name, but it doesn't matter. So uh, he mentioned uh, those analyses, and we figured out, okay, that sounds like a feature. That sounds like a feature. And Lucian said, uh, like his eyes, uh, like was were set on fire, and he was like, okay, I will try to do it. And we were making jokes like, okay, you will code it on a booth uh, in, in La Meriden uh, where the, the, the conference uh, was taking place, right? And that was not a joke. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, he did it. And I saw 
working prototype of the sentiment analysis. So uh, you, you'll be able to find out if uh, there is a positive or negative sentiments for the content ranking, the top 10. And let's say uh, if uh, you will have a positive uh, article, but in the top 10, there is eight articles with negative sentiment. Like Rad Palushak brought this uh, example of uh, buy Instagram likes. You know, and there was like some result. There was mixed sentiments. Some results were saying like, "Hey, it's 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 not uh, not good. It's not right to uh to buy Instagram Instagram followers." Blah blah blah. But other half, another half of the results were like, "We have the best Instagram followers for you." <laughs> you know, so there was yeah. like mixed sentiments. So this is something that will definitely uh, take a closer look. I saw it working, so you will be able to find out if your sentiment uh, is uh, is matching the intent in general, plus the the NLP analysis for the entities, and the entities are uh, the terms that uh, NLP algorithm kind of AI thing, uh, another buzzwords, but still uh, worth mentioning. Um, entities are the terms that are called uh, the, the relevant terms in uh, um, after after the NLP algorithm uh, analyze the content. So uh, you will be able to uh, to get those NLP entities in server with their uh, suggested uh, ranges of use. So uh, instead of, um, or maybe not instead, but next to the prominence words and phrases that we serve right now, uh, you'll be able to do analysis with NLP, and this will that will be a game changer. I think that it will help recover from BERT as well. Yeah, I think that will be a massive game changer. I've seen, I've got a few friends who've got their own custom made um, tool that, or, or not custom made tool, but they've got their own setup where it t- ties into the Google NLP API. And you know they're they're showing it off and and stuff like that. Going look at this, look at that. And um, so if you obviously integrate that into your tool, um, I do think that will be a massive game changer because it does look awesome um, from what I've seen um, others using with the the NLP side of things. So I think that would be awesome. But how does that <coughs> is that going to impact? The price of suffer does the price of suffer have to rise to be able to accommodate this or how how does that work if you're going to be integrating all these cool features? Because obviously the the Google API costs money. Yeah, the Google API is expensive. Uh, let's be honest, it is expensive. It is way more expensive than the analysis that we are running right now. Um, but uh, instead of rising prices, uh, I think that we will go uh, in a different direction. And um, there were some... I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be talking about that, but let's let's it. So, uh, in general, uh, there are some ideas about just uh, taking more credits uh, instead of rising prices. So, if if you are right now running a SERP analyzer or the let's say the SERP analyzer, which is limited daily, and if you, if you would like to 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 have an audit that will be NLP based. We will take just not the one credit, but a bit, a bit more credits from your account. And as far as I know, for the content editor, it will be like it is right now. But I'm not sure. But the content editor is limited monthly, uh, and in terms of the editor, we I think we we can handle it uh, like like it is right now. But uh, it it it's not. Uh, fully calculated let's say because yeah there's no way for us to do something like uh with, with, with without the without the profit margin you know uh because you just you just have to grow and uh, get more more people in the team to build the tool uh quicker to serve them better like uh now after the Chiang Mai SEO conference plus the Matthew Woodward's case study and some other people like Gael and Authority Hacker podcasts and all of those reviews. Uh, 
we have so uh, so 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 many people joining recently that uh, I became a, a full time support guy uh, for Surfer right now. Uh, <laughs> like we we are looking for a support guy. <laughs> yeah. like, so nice. uh, massive, massive. You know, I, I'm I'm like swamped between the meetings. I I just uh, finished uh, one call and I'm having another one when when we uh, finish recording this podcast. So I became a calendar guy. Which like uh, when I was uh, wor- working in the software house, uh, there was a guy whose whole life uh, was in his Google Calendar, and I was like. What? Uh, I I will never become <laughs> I will never become that person. <laughs> and now I look at my calendar and I I just do a doctor's appointment between the meetings and that's oh god, how how I could make it happen? <laughs> yeah, that's it's the perks of being part of a a small growing team. You have to muck in together in a. Uh, turn into three different types of guys, you know, whether you're the calendar guy, the meeting guy or the sales guy or, or the developer. I think you have to be able to turn your hand to anything um, when you yes. work in such an environment. And that that makes it even, you know, a better story that you guys are doing um, the stuff yourself from the ground up. It's not like you've got, you know, crazy amounts of money and, and you guys are just ordering people about and hiring you know developers or whatever you're actually building a real team and doing this stuff as you go as you grow which is <coughs> um, i think it's a great success story um you know rather than <coughs> you know having a hundred million pounds worth of investment and in building the next best tool <coughs> sorry i'm coughing to death here if not shook off the cold but uh yeah, no, I think it's a massive success story. Um, so it's great to get those insights, and I think the NLP integration will be a massive game changer. I look forward to seeing if that does come to um, fruition. Um, but before you go, um, everyone's going to ask, um, and I've already got it on my Black Friday deals page, but can you just tell anyone who's listening to the podcast, is there any deals going on with so far so we figured out the deal that will satisfy everyone i guess and we decided to uh not give any discounts uh, but to raise the limits uh, of your accounts so everyone who will be buying on the black friday or upgrading uh, they will get a 50 percent higher uh, usage limit so if you're a content editor on a pro plan says that you have a hundred a month, then you will have a hundred fifty a month for six months. So um, I think that uh, you know this is kind of a discount as well, since uh, if uh, you are planning to buy a pro, maybe you'll be uh, okay with the basic that is raised by the fifty percent. Uh, so. Uh, I, I hope that it will uh, be a, a push uh, for the people who are not convinced yet uh, to subscribe since, of course, NLP is coming and it will cost more credits. So that will be a great moment to uh, to sign up and get those 50% higher limits to, to, to utilize the NLP that is, is, is coming soon, really. I saw the prototype is working. So uh, as far as I know, Lucian... Uh, he will he will deliver yeah i'm sure you will you always deliver so um yeah so for anyone out there grab um what you can on black friday um because potentially it can certainly save you a few quid over the next six months so get involved but um sadly we are out of time Michal. but i want to thank you for coming on and sharing a bit about Suffer, what it does, and um, some of your success stories as well, and obviously what's going on in the future. Um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you personally to talk about Suffer or to you know ask questions, where's the best place for them to get a hold of you? 
Oh, thank you for this question. So guys, uh, look for on Facebook for our group. There is SEO Surfers group on Facebook. Uh, where a whole team uh, of surfers is is active, plus there is a pr- growing community. So uh, definitely you can ask questions there. I'm always there, plus there are other users uh, really committed to, to, to help other people. So definitely uh, take a look at Facebook group SEO Surfers. Um, and obviously, if you want to reach out to the tool, the tool is surferaseo.com. For anyone who is unsure of what the tool is or anything like that, and you'll be able to find out more about the guys there. And they do have a free one dollar trial for seven days for people who <laughs> free one dollar, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, free one dollar. Now a one dollar trial, so it is practically free. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, try it out. All I can say is try it out, and uh, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. But Michal, thanks again for coming on, man. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for your uh, audience. Like, I really appreciate your time. If everyone ended uh, here, thank you so much for listening to me, and you know, have a great day. Cheers. 